Hello everyone, my name is Jay Bird and today I thought, um, well, <laughs> so, if you couldn't tell, <laughs> you, I, if, I mean, if you have eyes, you could probably tell that, uh, it's, a uh, it's a bigger, bigger image. Th th that's because, uh, I'm just gonna try this out. Um, I'm looking, well, it's just, a friend suggested to me that they might, uh, they're in kind of interested in editing my videos, and I feel like in order for me, like, I should probably work a little bit on my videos before I get an editor, so make the quality a little bit better so that's why I'm practice gonna try doing it in this different you know ratio uh, stretching the image to the screen so we're gonna just see if that you know works out so yeah let's this get anyway get into it let's just jump into it tale of a p piano Ah, see, bud, I was signaling to you for the entire class. Why didn't you help me? Signaling? What do you mean? I didn't see anything. I nearly kicked your chair so that you'd notice. I forgot my glasses today, and the teacher asked me to solve a problem on the chalkboard, and I, I couldn't even see. Was it that difficult to help me? Oh, so we wear glasses. Hmm. That's very interesting. I really want to see what Sheeran looks like now, honestly. I didn't notice anything. It couldn't have been that bad, compañero. Stop complaining. He's punishing me with over 100 morpho syntax analysis for homework. Once you start on it, it's not so bad. In three different languages. All you need to do is copy and paste them, but change some words. One of them it's, is it's Etruscan. The hell is that? I don't know. I don't know. <laughs> I don't know. That's why I'm complaining. In any case, it's your own fault, Pompiero. You should have told him that you can't see without your glasses. Well, I was also sleeping for the first 40 minutes of class, and that might have influence, influenced it a little. But that's not the issue right now. I wanted you to at least give me a hand. Did you really not notice that I was trying to get your attention? Attention? If you're sitting next to me, then it's for a reason. Seriously? I repeat, I didn't notice anything. Not even that you weren't wearing your glasses. This is just a hunch that I've had for a while now, but Aussie, can you read what's on the chalkboard from here? My classmate fixed his eyes on the letters that sit unerased upon the green background, and after a few seconds, he squints his eyes as, as he tries to decipher the content. Aussie, don't tell me that you're nearsighted and didn't know it. What are you talking about? My eyesight is perfect. The board has math equations on it. You know, the usual. Our last class was Spanish. That explains how you got a direct ob object when solving for X. How the hell have you managed to pass until now? And that's why I used my break to go home and pick up my glasses. It took longer than I'd expected, and now I can't go back to school since the next class has already started, so now I'm wasting time. Oh, There is, like, a hair or something underneath my glasses. Oop, I brushed my microphone. Oh my god, my glasses need to... I have to clean my glasses every, like, five minutes. They get so dirty. Ugh. You're such a delinquent here. This is the second time I've caught you playing hooky! Claire nod, nods, convinced after listening my- li After having listened to my recollection. This morning I ended up missing some classes because I decided to skip school to get my glasses. 
And to my surprise, well, I'm not really surprised anymore. Claire had the same idea. You could say that we're both delinquents. I've already explained the reason that I'm here. So, so now it's your turn to tell me why you're here. Oh, look! I can already see that. I meant to ask why you aren't at school like all the other students. Not going to school makes you weary? Including you? That explains a lot of things. Your answers are always so weird, Claire. That's because I answered your questions, sure! A few weeks ago, this would have driven me crazy, but now I accept it as if it's an expected part of everyday life. Yet another coincidental encounter with Claire that I still refer to as such, despite the fact that I'm sure it had nothing to do with luck. I must admit that I didn't expect to meet her here today, though... <laughs> here today, though. I usually find her in the afternoon elsewhere, so meeting her here on a morning during the school day? This happened once before, but I really believe that, it, that that was a coincidence. Today isn't going to be a normal day, not even by the standard I've gotten used to since the day that I received the first email, and that's something I can confirm from the moment she makes the following proposal. Hey, sure. I want to go to the library. It's hard for me to get... It's hard for me to digest her words at first. I'm not sure which library she means, and if it's the one I'm thinking about, then I don't know how she knows about it. But I immediately recall that she was with me at the mall when Lucy had been talking about my leg in the accident. And then there's also the chance that she'd been following me around the, like she usually does. There's nothing to see and I'm pretty sure you already know the place. True, but it's different if we go together. She's concise with a tender, calm attitude that makes me want to accept her request without thinking it over, but I hold my tongue a bit longer. I know you well enough to know that you're going to do whatever you want despite whatever I say, so I don't mind le leading you there, but... Blah, 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 you're always moaning, Sheer. Is that place so important that you won't show it to me? Didn't you have an accident there anyways? I can't believe you'd go to a place with bad memories attached to it so often. That's why I'm interested in going with you, personally. That's exactly why... You can't leave your past behind, so you always end up returning to that place, am I right? I glance away from Claire. But that has changed! What, up until now, was an empty, gloomy place is no longer that way, correct? I think of Luce. Since we made that deal, we've been meeting in that library almost every day, to the point it's become a habit. But I try not to think about her any longer since Claire is standing in front of me and I don't think I'd be appropriate. It'd be appropriate since she could get the wrong idea. That's not the point. There were certain circumstances. There's no going back. Once w what was once yours isn't any longer. Losing it or sharing it, your choices are decreasing, but paradoxically it has opened a new world up to you. It allowed you to meet someone. Even the smallest of actions can open an unexpected door, and that's exactly what I want to do. I want to know who you truly are, Sheer. More so than the concept in my, concepts in my mind. And in exchange, I'll tell you everything that you want to know. I'll answer a each and every one of, your qu of the questions you're always asking. I scratch my forehead, unsure whether or not I understand Claire's intention. Hell, I'm not even sure I understand a single word of anything she says when she gets this way. I feel a certain mysticism emanating from her every time our conversations drift into this incomprehensible chatter as if covered by a thick fog that somehow draws me deeper within it. It's close, like having the answer on the tip of my tongue. It only needs to take form. It's all... it's as if... All of the secrets of this world are slipping right through the space between my fingers. You win. Let's go now. <laughs> Great! It's so easy to manipulate you, Sheer! Don't make me regret it already. I'm kidding, dummy.
cheerful and Rudy, Claire spins around as she tries to view the totally totality of the room all at once with her retinas. A bright expression placed across her face as if she's remembering the best moments in her entire life. The last part is a hunch that only grows more and more likely the longer I watch her. She walks around the tables and explores all of the shelves with the passion of a treasure seeker that already knows exactly where to find their loot. She opens all the doors she finds, only to close them again after taking a peek to see what was inside and nodding agreeably. This is fantastic, Cher. I love it. I'm beginning to understand why you're so obsessed with this place. Don't think that everything here is awesome. I have to clean the place from time to time, and it doesn't have water or electricity, or anything really, but at least it's quiet. It's very quiet. It's so far away from the rest of the world that it gives you a lot of privacy, especially for doing it. Doing... what? What? Oh no, what? <laughs> For the love of God, Sheer, you weren't boring yesterday. You knew perfectly well what I meant. Or would you like to give me, or would you like me to give you the demonstration of it right now? I choke on my own saliva. <laughs> and in response, Claire loudly begins to laugh at me. What a coward you are, Sheer. I'll give you time. We've already agreed to a certain date, and I'll honor that. I'm not a coward, but you can't say things like... Are you sure? Claire grabs my neck and pulls me closer to her, then stands on the tip of her toes until we're face to face. Our faces are so close that we're practically kissing. <gasps> Sparks fly out, so, out such that even a light breeze could set the room ablaze. But in the end, the kiss never happens. No destiny wanted to give me that push. It's her that, after a few seconds, embraces me, wrapping her arms around my neck and presses her lips against my right ear. What? I'm uncomfortable? <laughs> you're so cute when you're speechless, Sheer. She lets go, releasing me and taking a couple of steps backwards while playing with the ends of her skirt between her fingers. She looks at me and smiles, waiting for as long as she needs to. I don't need to hear her verbalize it to know exactly what she's thinking. The most important thing is for me to be truthful. I get distracted and sigh, looking away, and when I look back, she's gone. One of the doors is open, indicating that she went farther into the depths of the complex, getting lost in the labyrinth's gray hallways and forcing me to call out her name. She answers me. I can hear her voice resounding from every direction, but I can't find her behind any of the doors or corners. It's like a game, a round of hide-and-seek that plays out indefinitely. Our voices echo within the narrow spaces between the walls that extend out towards every direction. I'll never be able to find her unless I decide which path I must take. I won't reach anywhere if I don't stop and listen beyond the words, understanding the melodic whispers that could only originate from one place. The music room. <gasps> Are you playing... <sighs> it's... I know the song, but I keep forgetting it whenever it's, like, relevant. It's that one French song, right? It's like, Loon. Luna. La Belle Lune! I know, that's... It's like, Au, Au Claire Lune, right? Let me look this up. God damn it. Au, Au, Cla Au Claire... Au Claire Lune. I know, I know, I know, la, la, la. <laughs> But yeah, image for the thumbnail. Right? That's what it is, right? It's like... Oh, it's uh, a Claire de la Lune. I knew it was, it was something like that. I'm gonna take a... I'm gonna take a... 
It took a while, Sheer. Was it hard for you to find me? Screenshot for the thumbnail. Screenshot for the thumbnail. Screenshot for the thumbnail. Screenshot for the thumbnail. <laughs> Do you like my singing? But that's the song that's playing, right? Yeah. It has to be, yeah. Okay, anyways. The melody is deafening. My mind becomes a blur as I recognize the well-known tune that Claire is playing on the piano. Oh no, I didn't know they were- I didn't expect them to tell us. Oh no. She lovingly caresses the keys with her long, slender fingers. <gasps> with a satisfying motion, she releases the rest of the melody, senti sentiments from, her, from deep in her heart fluttering about. We can talk while you play, don't worry. I know this song so very well, by heart even. It's not a problem. Despite her invitation, <clears throat> I remain silent. I'm enthralled in memories, surprised in the beauty of the morning sun reflecting on the gentle waves of her on, on her hair, surrounding her face and emphasizing her charming smile. Every time I play this song, I always ask myself the same question: Is it is this a sad so Is this a sad or a happy song? Yes, it does appear to be mel melancholy, melancholic in the beginning. But as the song goes on, it gets more difficult to discern if it's actually a mourning of the past or a ballad of hopes for the future. Some say that depending on your mood or who you're with, your impressions of things may change. This feels like one of those cases where the song doesn't define the emotion. But the emotion is what defines the song. <gasps> uh oh! I don't reply, unable to find any answer in the way the notes are playing. I hear them clearly, but it's impossible for me to put them in any satisfactory pattern. Do you know the history behind this song? I shake my head. Of course not. There is none. People are always trying to find a deeper meaning behind everything around them. A story that descends beyond ourselves and gives us meaning. It turns out the composer made this piece when he was younger. He was ashamed of it for not being as good as his other works. He didn't publish it until many years after its conception, when he was a famous virtuoso and a client wanted to take advantage, advantage of his fame. And now, oddly enough, it's its most famous composition, the one he'll always be remembered by. Claire's playing roughens up, increasing the pressure against the keys without losing her pace and speeding up her words as she speaks. I was named after this song. Oh, that all makes sense. Makes sense now. Whoa! I was named after this song for the peacefulness and the shining bright moonlight. The power we have to influence other people's lives is nearly inconceivable. To the point that for everything we're ashamed about, we can simply add expectations for the next generations long before they're ever born. That's why I often so wonder what this song is supposed to be asking of me. Who I should be to meet its expectations. Her knees begin to shake nervously and intensely, rubbing against each other restlessly while her hands continue playing without losing tempo. It scares me. I'm afraid of not knowing what I feel. Afraid of not having control. Afraid of the lies behind every decision I make. And while I observe everyone else being worried about what will happen after they die, I'm scared of losing something even worse than death. I'm scared of something even worse than death. I'm scared of life. Ah. The melody softens, poisoned with the unease that comes after a storm, followed by a great effort made by each and every cell in her body not to stop playing. It's not embarrassment. I simply don't want to shine. I want to be in the background I want to be the background character that nobody cares about, talking and standing out just enough that no one notices me. That's why I hide, or at least that's how it was until something changed. Someone appeared and destroyed the foundations that I'd built with so much effort. 
I lived in a boring, peaceful, gray world that was closer to death than life, but those feelings that I'd long ago forgotten about returned to me and once again began blooming inside me. Stupid, isn't it? The complaints of a teenager. After that, those ideas spread like a virus taking hold of a weak existence that can only express indifference for the world around it, immersing it in darkness and waiting because it knows that this may be its last chance to find happiness. Anxiety, envy, jealousy, anger, rage, violence, disaster, being close to you has only awakened parts of me that are shameful. And I don't do anything about it because it's not your fault, it's your responsibility. It's because it's your- and I can't do anything about it because it's your fault, it's your responsibility. The more and more I have to talk in Claire's voice, the more and more it defaults to just me talking in my regular voice. It's really hard to keep it up after a while. This is mere, me, me, mere, mere, sheer. <laughs> this is mere, sheer. This is me, sheer. The mediocre melody that fears becoming a classic, that doesn't know which side of the spectrum it belongs to, and that only needs three words from you to be unafraid. You can make all that I represent disappear, or at least all that I've already accepted, if you allow me to. Her fingers slowed down as they reached the end of the song. The air is thick and heavy. There's something in it that burns, irritating my throat, my throat, my throat, to the, th my throat, my throat, be gone, throat. <laughs> be my throat, apparently, it, it's supposed to be throat, but it says throat, obviously. Irritating my throat to the point that I'm now totally speechless. When I look at her, she smiles like she always used to, like she always does. And I can't accept that. Not with those sad eyes! No! No, look at those sad eyes. Stop looking at me with those big ol' eyes. <laughs> this is Spongebob me. Quit looking at me with those big ol' eyes. Jeez, Claire. Look at that. I'm going to take another screenshot because I like screenshots. And I want to remember this forever. Forever. She's pretty. I like, I like Claire. She's weird. But I like her. Not with those sad eyes. Oh. When the song ends, we can't say anything. I've always been like this, right? It doesn't matter what I think. She already knows it. The worst part is that no answer will suffice in unless it's truthful. I'm sure about one thing, though. I'm sure about the tender tenderness she'd use to play the that Debussy, Debussy song. And all the lies I wanted to forget. I don't like how the game just got really quiet. It's very unsettling. I watch the other side's entrance and sigh, still searching for the best words for the naivete of someone who thinks there's a correct answer. <sighs> well guys, I'm gonna end it off here. If you guys enjoyed this episode of 1000 Lies, leave a like down below. Leave a, If you guys like the even oh, wait, before wait, wait 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 wait, let me backtrack. If you guys um okay, let me redo that. Uh, that's going to be the end of this episode. If you guys enjoyed this episode, leave a like down below, leave a comment down below. Tell me how you feel about the new uh aspect ratio and stuff. Um uh Comment down below. Share with your friends. Subscribe. Subscribe if you haven't. Ring that notification bell. And remember, die safely. Bye bye.